in the old days of computer graphics that were only but a few 3D packages on top of the world, and 3D Studio Max was one of them. It was used for creating video games, VFX for movies, architectural visualization, and more. It was an all-around package that was heavily used in those industries for how good it was at getting the job done since it had a lot of tools and still has a lot of tools and features that were created to solve pressing issues that were facing the artists. Furthermore, 3D Studio Max has and does have a lot of third-party tools that we call plugins or add-ons. If you're not aware, the plugins that were created for Max over the years were at the center of why studios and artists found this software so appealing to use. For example, for VFX, we have plugins such as Thinking Particles, Fume Effects, and Krakatoa for creating spectacular particle and fluid effects that were practically impossible with Max's native tools. Architects and architectural visualization artists were also lucky to have a bunch of tools for ArcVis, like V-Ray, that is a great option for rendering interior and exterior projects. Also plugins like RailClone, which is a parametric modeling tool that can help you create different elements like windows, balconies, and such. Its instancing power means you can easily create scenes with huge poly counts. Speaking of which, the guys from Geometry Store were kind enough to sponsor this video. They have the force of its kind online market of procedural, easy-to-use, high-quality, and customizable RailClone asset libraries for 3ds Max. If you have i2 software RailClone Pro installed, this is gonna be for you. Geometry products will help you decorate your urban scenes or exterior shots with ease, saving you a lot of time on rather boring and redundant tasks. Leveraging the power of RailClone in Max, you can take advantage of a long list of high-quality assets with PBR materials. For now, Geometry provides six packs that you can purchase separately. These are benches, bicycle stands, bollards, balustrades, planters, and window details. If you want to know more about Geometry Store, you can follow the link in the description below. In the last decade, Max users started complaining loudly about the lack of updates because, to be honest, these updates didn't cater to artists' needs and they didn't cut it anymore, especially knowing that Max is a paid software and an expensive one, I might add. On the other hand, third-party developers and artists were creating their own tools and plugins to bring new functionalities and increase the software's efficiency. When Blender 2.8 was released, it brought with it new possibilities for the Blender community and the 3D community at large since Blender is free and any artist can jump ship to Blender whether they are using Max, Maya, Cinema 4D or Houdini. And this is actually what is going on right now because a lot of artists from different software are using Blender more and more. This I believe led Autodesk, after many years of not being serious about the development of Max, to start actually adding features and tools that are worthwhile to a certain extent. This is good news for 3ds Max users, because it means Autodesk is not completely ignoring the software. But at the same time, this is not going to be enough, since its development is kind of slow compared to Blender's development. But still, what we are seeing is good to a certain extent. I might be wrong, but I believe that the recent couple of years of Max development were in part or completely due to how fast Blender is growing and the fact that it is taken away and winning Max users over and other software such as Maya and Cinema 4D, which is understandable. I believe if Autodesk wants to keep studios and game developers using their software, they have to keep up with the Blender's development or at least show that they are trying to catch up with it. And this is what they are doing right now. Max has been used and still being used in different industries such as game development, VFX, ArcVis, and so on. It is highly relevant professionally because if you are looking for a job in game development or other fields, there is a greater chance to be hired if you are a Max user compared to being a Blender user because, as I said, a lot of studios are still using it. But Blender is catching up fast. Hopefully during this decade it will be embraced on a wider scale, especially in game development and VFX. When it comes to the 3D community of Max, I would say it is not as big compared to Blender's, especially for hobbyists, because first of all it is a paid software, and the second reason is probably because the biggest portion of its users are professionals working in studios and creative companies. I would say it is less relevant when it comes to being used non-professionally, unless you are using it to work as a freelancer or something like that. I personally used Max for years, and I know that it is capable of doing a lot of things, especially with the help of third-party developers. Hopefully Autodesk will give their 3D software such as Max and Maya more attention and keep bringing new features and tools for the sake of those artists whose livelihoods depend on having the best 3D software to do their job properly and on time 
while working with their studios or on their own time. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.